back to the channel on here brew beer 101 uh, we're gonna today get our first brew on using the brewster beacon 40 all-in-one kit uh, we're going to be brewing the wadsworth 6x so i can't wait to get the barrel back on there my home brew it's been a long time since i've done a brew here in the new house that we've moved to probably over a year or two ago now um, so yeah i'm excited i'm looking forward to it see what mistakes we make and what we can learn from today and uh, i'll take you through the whole process we'll try and get all the detail we can into the video so it is going to be a bit of a long video but uh, make sure you stay tuned to see what trials and tribulations we get along the way and uh, i look forward to seeing you throughout the video and um, so with no further ado never fear let's go brew some beer right so we're right at the beginning of brew day this is still a bit moist from last night, so we've got to clean that again anyway before we start. So that was all disinfected to get any factory greases or anything on it that might have been on it. Um, so that's all clean, but needs re-cleaning. We've got all the grain and everything in the box. We're going to have to weigh out, so we've got the scale set up in the other room. We've got the trial jar with the hydrometer in there as well to tell us what the sugar levels are, but we'll get round to that. This is the bucket I've always used for weighing out my grain. I weigh all the grain out and put it all into this bucket so then it's easy just to mash it in, just pour pouring that one bucket in rather than adding different grains in as and when you need them. Here's the scales ready for weighing the grain out and the hops and all the rest of it. We're on cleaning duties again before we even start. So we've got three buckets here. So I'm going to use this one for the fermenting vessel. So that's going to be sanitised, obviously ready for then. This one I use as a measurement for my mash tun water. So it's marked there at 13 litres and that's been measured out with a litre jug so we know that that's exactly 13 litres just like on here where we've got our own measurements of 13, 15, 20 and 23. As you can see the scales on the bucket don't read right so don't rely on them. Hence why it says guideline measurement. And this one we're going to use to collect all the hot water when we do the chilling um, so we can use that to clean with at the end of the day. Obviously the bubbler, siphon tube and our mixing spoons. I've chosen to use this as a sparge tank today, cool box, so we'll have to heat that water using the kettle. 75 degrees, we can measure that. So we're all cleaned down now, everything's been rinsed. So we're going to go for the brew, so now we need to start Measuring out my water, so the mash water I'm going to start with is only 13 litres, that's normally what I do. But I'm just looking on this level here and thinking 13 is about here. That doesn't look like an awful lot above the grain line. It's going to be close. Normally only mash with 13 litres. That looks so low on the, on the vessel, I think I'm going to have to chuck an extra two in. But this is what today is going to be like, which is good for you as well, the viewer you're coming on this mission with me so i'm going to start warming this up now and then i'm going to go and get an extra two liters to take it to the 15 liter mark so if we just go uh, manual and then we want a strike temperature of 75 degrees so we'll go across to uh, 2500 to power to temperature we want that to be 75 And start. Okay, so that's now heating. We've got the H flashing up there. So we're now trying to heat that to 75 degrees. So I'm going to go get two litres of water just to bring that level up a bit. But we have to make accommodations for the equipment that we're using. Hence why nothing is auto and no brew is the same. So while that's heating up now, because that'll take a little while, we'll go and uh, measure out all the grain. Once we get to 75 degrees, the strike temperature, I'm probably going to have to lower that set point down from 2,500 watts because it's probably going to overshoot 75 degrees pretty quickly so I'll keep an eye on that as it's raising so I'm just going to weigh all the different grain following my recipe onto the scales add it all into the bucket so it's all in there ready to go so we're going to add a teaspoon of gypsum into the mash water beforehand and half a Camden tablet as well and keep the other half because we'll use that in the sparge water later so there's no 15 litres in there, we're up to 38.4 degrees C. The pump's recirculating it while we're heating it, just to 
try and aid as the speed that it heats up. It hasn't taken too long, it's been a couple of minutes, five minutes. I've weighed me 4,000 grams or four kilograms of me pale and me next is crystal malt 165 grams and shock 40 grams and then 125 with sugar so I'm going to weigh that out now so I've got the sugar measured out which won't be needed till later in the boil but I've got that measured out ready I'm going to add hot water to that but we'll get to that later here's the three different grains that we're going to be using so we've got the crystal here, the chocolate here and obviously the rest of it is the pale so we're at 51 degrees still climbing at 51.1 51.2 so that's coming up nicely Everything's written down, so today we're brewing Wadworth 6x and we use the instructions that you should always follow you should always have everything written down beforehand and always have an easy list so you can check off before you even start that you've got everything that you're going to need I'll just run through it so when I've got 5 minutes I don't just sit there waiting for something to happen try and stay ahead of where you are so we've just transferred 13 litres to mash time we've had to go to 15 litres on that because we weren't high enough on the level as we looked at before we're aiming for a strike temperature of 75 degrees. Now 75 degrees, because we've increased our volume, might be a bit high. But if it is a bit high, we can always add a dash of cold water to bring that temperature down quicker when we add the grain in. So the teaspoon of gypsum's already in there. We've got the half uh, cam tablet already in there. So it's just a case of waiting now to add all grain to the mash tun and stir thoroughly. And then after that, we're going to be aiming for 66 degrees in the mash tun and then boil kettle ready, so that's in case you need it hot um, but I think we're going to more likely need cold this time rather than hot um, but obviously if you are cold on your temperature once you've mashed in if you're below that 66 in this kettle it doesn't matter too much because you're going to have that as your set point so obviously the boiler would naturally bring it up anyway but with the cool boxes that we've always used as our mash tons you need to make sure you bang on 66 before you shut the lid this is a 90 minute mash and we'll move on to the next bit after. What I'm going to do, I think, is when we get to 70, I'm going to drop that that power down. Let's drop it down to 1800 and just see how we get on from there. Now what I'm going to do is, because we're at 72, I'm going to put that wattage down. So let's go power down. Let's take that down to 1800, like I said before. And we'll put it on 60 minutes still. And we'll just go for a start again. So now the heat's back on. When we come to mash in, we'll just switch the heat off because we don't want to complicate things when we're trying to mash in on the temperature. And we'll also be checking our temperature with this. So it's 75 now, so we're just going up to that. So I'm going to stop that now at 75 degrees. So we're off now. So grains all here ready to go. We've got a spoon ready. Everything's ready to mash in. So we'll mash in, see what the temperature is on the gauge here because it still tells us the temperature even though it's off, which I suppose is quite helpful. But we'll also be checking with the doofer up there. So let's get it on. So obviously pump off first. Gently mash in. I'll put about half in. That's as thick as I've ever had it. So that water level is just definitely too low. We'll mix it in as best we can though, because I don't want to keep adding more and more water. So it's a good job we um, start with a high strike temperature, you see, because it gives us this time to play about a bit. Yeah, I don't know what the temperature's on now, 70 degrees still. But obviously that's measuring the liquid at the bottom, not this grain soup we've got on the top. So we've done well, no dough balls. No big dough balls in here. 
so you can see how dry that's looking so what we need to do now is get that lid on and get it recycling that's looking nice porridge so we're at 70 degrees on there at the moment so if we chuck the top lid in first Just realised the fucking white thing's gone in there. Bastard. So somewhere in there is my white plug. This stops the grain from going down the middle. So anyone see it? <laughs> there it is. Ta da. So at least we didn't get any grain down the overflow tube. Just I knocked it off and I was stirring like a maniac, trying to get it all nicey nice. Back to where we were then. See, it's good to always have a disinfected bucket just to stuff in there so you can chuck stuff in it without having to worry about putting it down all the time. So now, if we go back to putting the top lid on, and then this needs to be lowered down into the into the grain. That's as low as she goes. So it's gonna have to sit like that now. We'll start rinsing the grain off and we'll see what see what temperature it settles at before we put the burner on. Put it on slow flow to begin with. Flying up there now. We're dropping this water level right down there. So what we're going to have to do now is slow the pump down and let that water level catch up. So what we don't want to do is flood the top and go down the overflow tube in the middle. Because that means we're not pulling it through the grain. It's dropping 68.9. So we'll just wait for that to get down a bit lower. So like I say, the water trapped in the bottom was one temperature, but the grain's a different temperature, so I'm just waiting for it to equalise out. And it should settle around the 66 marks, it's normally spot on with the temps, but with a different water volume, etc, and a different amount of metal work, normally we're doing this in a plastic insulated vessel, so we'll give or take a degree or two, I'm not too bothered. So next time I'd obviously strike at like 72 degrees, rather than 75, so we're closer to the 66, and I'd hope to have less time messing about because obviously that was a faff. So I'm gonna set this now. Might as well start it now. So if we go manual again, reduce that right down. That, let's just go for a thousand watts. And then we'll go temperature 66. And we're on a 90 minute mash here with this recipe. So we need to do timer up to 90. There we go, and that won't start until it gets to 66 anyway. So it's just going to keep cycling. We just need to make sure that we don't pull too much off the pump. So you might need to just throttle that back again. Yeah, see, we're actually getting a level up here now. So this, all the water is above the grain, is what that means, which is good. But we don't want to overflow it. So as you can see, it literally took two minutes to look to drop down to that 66 degrees. So now, hopefully a thousand watts should hold it around that 66, but I might have to stop it and restart it with however many minutes are left with even more or less on the set point. So we're 20 minutes in. We're maintaining that 66 quite well. It's, go, it's taken quite a while now, a couple of minutes every time the boiler kicks in and out, staying from about uh, 65.7 up to about 66.7. So we're hovering around 66 which is perfect 500 watts we've only got five liters in the bottom of here though which is why i've turned that right down but the good thing is on the top we're nowhere near the overflow pipe because we don't want it to go down the overflow because that means that the liquid isn't getting rinsed through the grains 
So we've got like, I don't know, about a centimetre of liquid on top. And that's obviously percolating its way back through at a nice, slow, steady rate. So at the moment, we're doing all right. So you can see that it takes a while for that temperature to drop. And that'll be purely because we're losing temperature through the top as the water makes its way back down. So as it keeps going round, it'll keep kicking in and out, kicking in and out. But it, it heats it really quickly if you have too much power on because the level in the bottom is so low. So you definitely don't want that anywhere near a thousand watts because that'll be way too much. But bear in mind that we probably haven't got enough water in there to start with. I, I, I probably should have put another like five litres in there and started with 20 instead of 15. So it's a good job we put the extra two in. So I think without the extra two, we would have been game over by now. But hey, we're making it happen. We're smack on 66. We're coming up to the hour mark, so it'll be time to start thinking about sorting my sparge water out right in a minute. It's looking nice and gold already in the sight glass. And it's looking nice and gold in there as well, if you can see that. So we're about a centimetre deep on there. And we're just gently... The valve's cocked about, about half, something like that. So obviously when you do start this, you need to start it really slow not fast because if you start too fast it will pull all the grain through before it settles as a bed we want this section of grain here we want it to be compact and when it's compact the fluid will make its way through percolate through the grain drip out the bottom get warmed up again to 66 degrees that we're aiming for here get pumped back to the top and then percolate its way back through again this is why you definitely don't want and i've seen a few people with the overflow pipe with liquid pouring down there you don't want that because if it's going through the overflow pipe then that fluid isn't going through the grain is it so you, you need to be juggling basically making sure that you don't use the overflow pipe is my advice I'm glad I started with the brewery on the floor my knees are killing me <laughs> obviously when we come to sparge we'll be able to just sit my sparge tank on here and then just use jugs and jug it in like everyone else until we get a uh, some sort of sparge set up like a, a, a simple wire uh, like a spinning one or whatever I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet as you can see that from a distance it's just starting to drop down to the plate level so what I'm doing is just eking this open a little smidgen at a time and you can see that the level down here has gone up ever so slightly so as soon as I get down to five litres if it goes below five, I slowly close that a little pinch. So this is why I say you can't just leave a beer and go automatic, go, see you in 90 minutes. Because God knows what's going to happen in that 90 minutes. I'm just going to sit here and keep an eye on it. Keep checking that level. Keep adjusting the flow if I need to. Um, I think 500 watts is probably a little bit too much looking at that now, even still, because it's shot up to 67 this time round. So I might even drop that down another 300, but I'm doing it at the 10 minute mark, so I know how many minutes were left. So we're, we're, we're dialing it in, we're dialing it in. It's always uh, it's part of the practice. But I did say, no brew's ever the same. <laughs> so I'm going to go sort my sparge water out, and I'll uh, meet you back here then. So we've just dropped below the 50 minute mark. I've put this down to 300 watts now. Still maintaining about 5 litres in the bottom of the boiler. Um, it's a lot better at 300 watts, so it shows you we're just tickling the heat. Everything nice and gentle is always going to be better. You can see how golden that's looking, and we've got about a centimetre and a half now. About the same still, so it shows that we're getting good flow through through the boiler, um, through the mash, sorry, and into the bottom of the boiler. So, and the colour's definitely getting darker as well, so it shows that we're getting good rinse. The valve I haven't adjusted for quite a while now, probably 10, 15 minutes. So we've set that flow just nicely, but again, you can't leave it. You've got to keep an eye on it all the time. But that 300 watts, it's like in that with five liters in, in the bottom. I've started boiling the kettle now as well to fill this up with my sparge water. So there's about two kettles worth in there now. So I'll, it's easier to just keep chucking hot in because that's what takes the time. And then once we get it above 75, because that's what we're targeting for for our sparge water, if we get above 75 degrees. Um, I'll just bang some cold in to bring it down. So we've got 48 minutes yet to worry about doing that. So we'll, uh, I'll check in with you shortly. 
26 litres to sparge tank, so I used to sparge with 26 litres. Um, but we've added an extra two into the boiler, so now we only need 24 litres of sparge available. Um, but some of that used to be trapped in the cooler itself. So I did write on the coolers how much was trapped in there. 4.5 volume loss here. So with 4.5 litres of volume loss, we can take that off that 26. So 21.5, take off the two, takes us down to about 19.5. So if we aim for 20 litres of sparge water available, and then that'll take us to a total volume then of 15 plus 20, which is 35 litres, which is this filled right to the top, which obviously we don't want to do. So I think if we aim for 30 litres in the boiler, then by the time we've boiled down, we should definitely be above our 23. It's looking super clear and golden of about still about a centimetre on the top so and we haven't been down that overflow tube in the middle once which is obviously like I said to you what you want to aim to do is not go down the overflow almost down to the half an hour mark so I thought I'd mention the little black book so whenever you do a breed you see the dates from years ago in here you should always write down what, what you've uh, what, what went on so this is the last one did 6x look 2015 Christmas time, just after Christmas, takes me back. So you can see I use the exact same recipe as what we're using now. Um, fuggles, all the rest of it, Irish moss. Um, so you can see what... In fact, look, they didn't have SO4 in stock, so I've had to use Muntin's Gold Yeast. And I forgot to write down what temperature I pitched it at. But no one's perfect, so you can see what the SG was. 10.44, the drop was 34, final gravity was 10.10 which makes it 4.5% which is what, exactly what we're aiming for. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to make a note in this black book of the valve position, uh, the wattage that we're using during the mash and then yeah just anything else along the way that we see worth making a note just so next time I come to use this after this first practice run we've uh, got some lessons learnt and don't just forget what we've done so it's 30 minutes so it's time to finish off my sparge water so i'm just going to check the temperature in here now add a bit more water in there get it to the 75 degrees that i'm aiming for for my sparging nice warm seat actually i sort of just been sat on and then uh, sort out the hops and stuff for what's going in and get them in a sandwich bag or a cup or something ready so i'm going to go crack on with that now so just check my sparge temperature and I'm only at 50 degrees. So I've got 25 minutes to sort that out. So kettle's boiling, so we're getting there. Volume's up as well, so that's looking all right. And the uh, kettle's just kicked in, 65.6. Then a gentle brew, still at five litres. Looking absolutely clear, crystal clear up here now. It's going, uh, it's going all right, so far so good I think. So there's only 30 minutes left now. Just check that, that's at 62 degrees centigrade, so that gives me enough time to do two more kettles, which I think would be about right to take that to 75, so that worked out quite well. So that half the can Camden tablet is now in the sparge water. So 40 grams of fuggles onto the scales. So nice resealable bags, which is good, the way it should be. So obviously this is the pot I'm going to use. Tear the scales, zero. So you want 40 grams. Forty. Forty one, not deep. So you can see the smells. Absolutely lush. So six minutes to go. Last kettle's boiling. Haven't checked the temperature of that yet. I'll do it when the other kettle's ready. I've got my pint glass well litre glass sorry ready to start pouring from there into there and start sparging. So that'll be ready soon. And then once we do get the boil going, I know I can relax because we've got that ready and the sugar ready for the first 15 minutes. Okay, so we've just hit the 90 minutes. Boiler made a funny noise. I was pouring the kettle into here at the time, so I couldn't uh, record that, but it was dee 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 dee. Celebration time, I think. So, pump off. Now you can see, obviously, because the level wasn't above here to begin with, all dropped into here now. 
it's still rising. So you can see the rate that it falls through the grain. So what we're going to do now is start sparging on the first notch. We're on the first setting. The first two liters, two first liter I take out of here. I'm gonna stick in our sanitizer bucket. Just because that'll warm that tapper. You can hear it still trickling through the grain. We start to hear that stop, that trickling through the grain. That's when I'll raise the grain bed, I think. We can lift the out, just to have a look. See how there's still all water sitting up here, and you can see that it's not really short circuited anywhere, it's quite level, which is good. So, all that water's still got to make its way into the bottom yet. So, what we'll do is we'll put the lid on just to keep some temperature in there. And then, as soon as we get down close to 30 litres, which is on there 22 it's a little while to go yet in fact i might stick another couple in okay because we've got such an amount in there now i am gonna put it on because we're right up here it's gonna take ages i've always put it starting now so all i'm gonna do down here now is obviously put the power up to full 2500 and then go to timer we want that to be 90 because it's a 90 minute boil and we want to go temperature it's the next one sorry obviously you want that boiling and start so it won't start counting down the 90 minutes until it gets to the boil so we'll see how long that takes thinking about now the sugar has to be dissolved into a jug of water anyway so that's going to be a litre added in so we'll do that first before Topping the boiler up with just the kettle water. So we'll put the bung back on the pipe so we don't lose it. We're close on volume anyway now. So I'm going to lift him out so I can hear the kettle in the other room finished. You can see the rate that it's been dripping out. So our total volume then was just over 28 that I thought we was going to get. So that's actually looking really good. But it's 75 degrees on there. There's already protein starting to show on the top. So what we're going to have to do is just keep an eye on that because we don't want it to boil over. So all you have to do is just sweep the protein to one side. A lot of people scoop it out. I, I tend to leave it, leave it be and let the protein flock and that settle out after. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of grain in here. I can still see floating around, which is a bit short. Normally, when we put it into the boiler, because we've backfed it through the mash a few times before we drain it off, you don't get any of that grain fall off. We we'll go get this kettle.
I'm up to 80 degrees soon. There we are, so we're at that 30 litres now. So as I was talking to you about the temperature before, you see, because I've stirred it, so the temperature's dropped right off, it was on 81. And that's just because the boiler's so tall, so having the thermostat right next to the element, it's going to give you dodgy readings. Just chuck the lid on. I'm regretting it already because you can't see it foam over like that. Because we're only at 30 litres, we have got a few inches of head space. Those are obviously the max carrying volume is 35 litres, and you're basically up to this rim here the ring that supports the mashton. I wouldn't want that full there. Uh, the other boiler, we do get up to about that level, but I know how that boiler reacts, so I've got a clue what this thing's going to do. What you've got to also acknowledge is that when liquids heat up, as you know, everything expands. So if you look at the expansion, it's about half a litre higher than when we started the boil. So you've got to bear that in mind, don't take any, don't fill the boiler anywhere near the top of it because it will just cause you masses of problems. We've got another 19 degrees to go yet, so it's probably going to be another half a litre higher. So I'm just gently bringing the foam to one side again. If you keep the foam on one side, you'll be fine. And like I say, I know a lot of people skim this out, but I haven't done that before, and I ain't starting now. It's just something else to have to faff with, isn't it? We've never had issues with cloudiness and beer or anything to do with that, with keeping the proteins in. By the time it goes out of here, this is our settlement time, and then it goes into the fermenting vessel, and then obviously the yeast will take most things, sediment to the bottom, and then into the barrel. I mean, you're not going to have anything in there by the time it gets to that point. It's always crystal clear when we have a pint. So I'm just keeping a keen eye on it, just to see when it starts like fluttering in places. Like, it'll go a bit wavy, and that's when it's going to start to just come to the boil. Because obviously, again, don't rely on your temperature gauge. Just because it's 93.4 down there doesn't mean what it is up here. Could be a bit hotter up here. Could be a bit cooler. So if you can see that now, just starting to. Starting to wobble a bit over here on the far side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the protein towards me. Because that looks like the side that it's going to naturally flow up. Because it will it'll roll in boil. It will roll in. So that's saying now that it's reached the boil. And it's going to maintain that now for 90 minutes. It started the 90 minute timer. So we've got a bit of an opening there now that we're going to try and keep as an opening. So he was very close then to having a boil over. Super, super close. So you can see that's a really strong rolling boil. All the protein now is dissolved into the foam. It's all dissolving into itself. If anything, 2,500 watts is probably a bit keen. Um, it's a bit high up there. It's a strong boil that. So to be fair, next time I might drop it down to 2,400 watts when we get closer to the boil because that's as close to a boil over as I've ever had. I was finger on the button, ready to press stop to try and take the heat out of it if it got uh, much higher. So that's how close it was to, to actually going over. Scary stuff, eh? So obviously this thing does pack a bit of a punch. My old... Uh, boilers 2500 watts as well but this obviously is a different uh, different tolerance different uh, distance from the element to the bottom of the pan or something maybe but that was a good uh, it's a good boil so we're already four minutes in to the boil normally you only start the timer when it starts rolling but because it's automated or semi-automated it's already started counting down so as soon as that gets to 75, that'll be the 15 minute mark to chuck in our first hops. The other thing you have to bear in mind as well when you're doing your 
actual hour and a half boil or hour boil is the steam. Because obviously if you've got anything in the room you're in where you don't want it to get rusted, like my garage full of all my car bits, then uh, you need to think about ventilation. So I'm going to go and crack the door open down here and let some steam out. Yeah, so I wouldn't normally do a brew in here, so I've set the desktop fan off. It's cleared it pretty quickly. Just pushing out the door. Don't know if you can see that on camera. So that's literally all it's going to do now for 90 minutes. So what I'll do is I'll bring you back in eight minutes' time and we're ready to chuck the first set of hops in. Another thing always worth bearing in mind as well is this is the most dangerous part of brewing beer is when you've got 30 litres of sticky 100 degrees temperature uh, liquid. So obviously think kids, pets, anything like that, just everyone out basically. Don't have anyone near you. It's the safest way. Just ticked over to 74 now. Eh? So it's time to start sticking the hops in. Hobs? Hops? So I'm getting tired already. So we'll just gently sprinkle these in. Away from the pump I think. You can already see them coming back round in the boil. Now it's starting to smell like hobby beer. So I'm sure you can see the green in there. Really starting to smell like brewing beer now. So that's when the sugar should have gone in, now, but because I needed to top the boiler up, I stupidly put the sugar in when I topped the boiler up, which was a mistake. I can actually start doing the fermenting vessel, get that scrubbed down again, it's been soaking in sterilizer, get that all scrubbed down ready, and the siphon tube as well, because obviously I haven't used any filtration in there, I'm not going to use the pump to pump out what's in there because I don't want to clog the pump up or get any debris in the pump if I can help it for next time. So obviously it'll be thoroughly cleaned anyway when we're finished, but it just makes cleaning harder if you've used the pump in my eyes. So once it's been chilled, all the sediment should have settled to the bottom. Um, obviously the pump takeoff point is on the base. So we've just come up to the hour mark where we'd normally top up the boiler, but looking at our volume, we've only lost about a litre and a half, two litres maybe since we started so I think we'll leave it see where we are at half an hour left on the boil maybe top it up then if you do need to top it up then just top it up with the kettle it's better to do it in the middle of a beer in the middle of a beer? it's better to do it in the middle of a brew rather than at the end just so it has time to mix all in nicely so all the grain that's left over um, apparently it makes good chicken feed, if you know anyone with chickens, chuck it to them for nothing, obviously it's one way of getting rid of it. But for me it just goes straight in the black bin bag, straight into the bin. So that's one good thing about this, I think it'll be easy to tip this upside down in the black bin bag and shake it out, because the bottom obviously falls out like the top. Obviously wait for the grain to cool down for you throw this. Ta-da! Make sure you've got a decent white roll as well, not kitchen roll, a proper nice white roll or some decent wipes. Because you're definitely going to need it and you get through it like no tomorrow. So this has been soaking the whole time with sanitizer in it. I've actually emptied that out and put fresh sanitizer in it again. Wiped it all around, give it all a good scrub. So in here is the bubbler and the siphon tube as well, both soaking. And I've already pulled one lot of sanitizer the stuff that was in here through the uh, siphon tube to get it down the sink whereas this time what i'm going to do is siphon the sanitizer out of here into the bucket of all the stuff that i've just disassembled so this has all been cleaned with the hose and all wiped down quickly but i'm going to sanitize it all and give it another rub down and then leave it to dry so it's all nice and ready to go next time okay, so we're coming up to 30 minutes on the boil 
So we'll check the level again. We're at 27 litres thereabouts. So obviously with losses and shrinkage, we should be on for our 23 litre target without topping the boiler up, either at the hour mark or half an hour mark. So we'll see what we end up with on this one. But even air temperature affects this, because if it's cold, then you get more steam. So you lose more volume in steam when it's colder than when it's warmer. So even that's worth bearing in mind. We're going to take a hydro reading as well. That's already been sanitised, but I ain't going to put that back in the mix. I'm just going to chuck whatever I feel that is when we do the hydro test. Let's have a little sip of it as well, see what it tastes like. And then we're good to go. So we're getting there, we're getting somewhere near. So obviously we've got to put the chiller in as well. So there's a lot of people put it in for like the last 15 minutes, but I think I'm just going to chuck it in for the last five. So I want to give the protoflock time on its own in there to have a good whirl round for at least 10 minutes without putting the chiller in there, which is going to disturb the flow of the rolling boil. So that's my theory behind that. And then at flame out, as they call it, flame out is when the heat stops being applied at the end of the rolling boil. We're going to put in our finishing hops, which in this case is the 15 grams of golden. We've already got weighed out. Broke flock tablet ready to go. And the yeast as well ready. When we're ready for the fermenting vessel. Just in time. 16 minutes. So we'll put that uh, broke flock tablet on. It's starting to get dark. There you go, 15, holding oil, how much have we lost? 26 litres on the gauge, man. so we're looking good, so in she goes. So it fizz up. As you can see we saved the best thing to the last to clean, because this is going to be a bit of a pig to clean all round inside these nooks and crannies and you've got the tubes here tubes there so that's going to be fun while being careful not to get it on the electrics so there's about 8 minutes left so I'm going to stick the immersion chiller in it's all been sanitised don't forget it's gently in not disrupting the flow too much. It is definitely coming more through the middle now though. Through the middle of the chiller isn't it? Whereas before it was like circulating. So we're almost there. We're one minute from flame out. And that flame out don't forget. We've got to put in our 15 grams of golden hops. There you go. There you are. The end. And it's switched off. So we'll chuck these in. There you go. So we can monitor the temperature on there, we can see it's already dropped half a degree. It'll drop really fast from the boil, the first 10-15 minutes. You can see all the hops as well come to the surface now, look, it have been rolling around in the boil. It looks very much alive. We're above 25 litres on there. We want 23 in the in the vessel, don't forget. That's what we've always aimed for. So, main thing in brewing, keep notes, follow instructions, write all the instructions down. So at the end here, it was from running through our counterflow chiller. So we'd recirculate back to the boiler until it runs clear. And then we would run to the FV and aim for 18 degrees C, 23 litres. So before we do that into the FV, this was the map out of my old system. These are all valves. We used to have 
proper pump as well. And it was all set up on the wall. So it was, it was awesome. But since we moved out, we never got back to, to how it was. We had a proper drain as well. Even though I know it's always worth reading, just in case you think, oh, I feel, God, I haven't done such and such. So obviously sanitise all the equipment, we know we've done that. So collect 23 litres of water, 18 to 23 degrees. So that means we can hit 21 degrees smack in the middle, aim for 20. So that's different to what it says in the other thing we just read. And I've written both of these down. So take the OG reading and record so we know we're ready with the jar and the hydrometer. And stir thoroughly and vigorously to aerate the water. We're ready as well with our spoon. It's been sanitised. Pitch the yeast and gently stir it into the wort. Seal the lid and fit the bubbler. So day four, we'll need to test the SG and record just so we can see how it's how it's getting on. So we've only got to worry about it to here today. Only about five minutes. It's already dropped seven degrees on its own. You can see all the hops have disappeared. Everything's settling down to the bottom of the boiler. That's why I'm reluctant, you see, to use the pump to pump it into the FB. Much better siphoning. And we'll keep the siphon looped. So anything that it does draw through it'll be very, very minimal amount. Whereas the pump will pull it all towards the pump because that's what it's designed to do. So it's been the full 15 now. Eh? 86.9 it's dropped to, so we've lost about a degree a minute almost. But we're just sitting there not even running the water. So let's go and crack the valve on the hose. So we only want it cracked really. That sort of flow is perfect. It's manageable. It's not a massive waste. So it's been almost 10 minutes. We're just going back past the magic 66 degrees that we was mashing at. We've almost filled the first bucket, so we're not doing too badly for water actually, water usage. So we've just gone up to half an hour since flame out. So we had that 15 minutes sitting without the chiller on. It's had 15 minutes with the chiller on. We're on to our second bucket almost full. So we're filling two, bu two buckets every 15 minutes. And we're at 50 degrees, so we're halfway. Well, halfway to zero. Thank God we haven't got freezer fucker because we'll be here all night. And just to show you what I was talking about earlier on in the video, that you can have two different temperatures in the same kettle. We've got 41.2 down at the bottom there. 59. It's about 59 degrees in the top of the boiler there. But then the bottom is 40 degrees. And it's cold to touch. So this is what I was saying about not relying on the digital readout when the thermostat's located so low down. So, as you can see from the cold, it shocks the protein that drops to the bottom. So there's a little bit of scum on top, but most of it is gone. And that's the protoflock tablet that obviously aids that as well. So this means now we're ready to transfer to our FV. So just push your rubber bong in to the lid and push this in. Bubbler. I'll sanitise my hands. And the good thing is these days everyone's got hand gel, alcohol gel, perfect. So I've used it on my hands as well. So I've just had to make do because I can't find the stick that goes in the end of my uh, siphon tube. Which is an oversight, so I've just had to sanitise the cable tie, sanitise the old spoon, that's the longer spoon, and I'm going to have to put this all the way to the bottom. And I've left a bit of a gap on the end so I don't suck up all the crap from the bottom of the tube. It's a bit of an oversight there, on my behalf. And I didn't think about using it because normally I pump it out. So we're all learning, it's all the school day today. It should be fine. Anyway, because like I say, I've sanitised my hands and used alcohol gel. So, it's not my hand that's the concern. Pipe's all been sanitised, spoon's been sanitised, and so is the cable tie that I've had to use. So, we should be fine. And we can see that now, drawing out really, really clear. 
looking all right. So we'll let that just finish sucking. But there's nothing left in it. Yeah, I think that's wait 10.40, 10, 10.44 or 10.45. So we're a bit high on that, which is good. So we're looking good. Siphoning in. Temperature's probably about right, 25 degrees. So everything's just, just coming together now. I'm absolutely knackered. So we started today at 4 o'clock. We did chilling. It's now just gone half past 10. So we've been at it six and a half hours. But that's because it's the first time brew on this equipment. And obviously I had to make the chiller up before we even started. Everything had to be cleaned. And everything else that goes with it. So, yeehaw. So all that's left, obviously, to do now is wait for that to all siphon out into the FV, the fermenting vessel. And then get the yeast pitched, which shouldn't take 10, 10 minutes now. And then clean the brew, the, the brewster out. The brewster. Clean that out. And that's it, everything else has been cleaned away. So that's why it helps to clean stuff when you get the chance to clean stuff. And just have a little sip taste. This should taste really sweet because it hasn't been uh, converted to alcohol yet, so it should be full of sugar. Woo! Tastes like sugary beer already. So there's loads of uh, sediment in it, so I'm definitely going to modify the vessel, I'll make this better than they made it, but I just need some time, so obviously we've had to find out what the flaws are to make it better. So we've managed to pull it right down to the bottom, we're a couple of litres short though because of everything that's stuck in there and we've just started pulling all the shit out the bottom of the brewer. So just as it was about to get through the valve, I managed to shut the valve. So we have kept it all back. Well, all the main crap was in there anyway. Yeah, it's looking pretty murky. Should be alright then. A little set of light in the FV. A little set of light in the bottom down here. It's not a problem. But like I say, so massive improvements to be made on the next one. So we could do a montage of fuck-ups on this one. So let's just get on with it. Get the uh, air rated as best we can. Get the yeast in. I'll start washing everything off so I can go to bloody bed because I am shattered. Basically, looks like a giant pint. Some people stir it in, and other people don't. So I, I never stir mine in. I just always just give it a light sprinkle and try and do it evenly all over. You can see it attack the foam as soon as it lands on it. Foam's almost like rehydrating it before it even gets to the, the wart. Make sure it's all in there. Get your money's worth. So that's it. Sits in there now. Ten days. So because of all the acid we've had, there's three litres out. Just shy of 20 litres when it should be up here on the 23 mark. So it's cost us dearly. Got a little bit of water in the, in the bubbler. You don't need much in them. The more water you put in them, the more noise they make. As long as you've got a, a seal there, it'll be fine. And I did check the temperature as well. It's 22 degrees in there, which is one degree warmer than we wanted. So that just leaves me with all that mess that's in the garage now which if I don't clean now it's like cleaning concrete tomorrow so I've got no choice but to just do it now everything's sticky as well because of the sugar that's in it so the next time we check the fermenting vessel will be day four when we do the SG specific gravity of it so you've got OG which is the original gravity which is what we took at 1044 1045 we'll call it 1044 and then you've got the SG, which is the specific gravity at that time. And then you've got your FG, which is your final gravity. 
which we're aiming for 1010. So that means that all the sugar will be consumed by the yeast and convert to alcohol. And then it's the difference between the original, the OG, and the FG, the final, is what you calculate your uh, ABV, your, your alcohol percentage on. So we're aiming for four and a half percent. So I can't believe it came back so clean. I hope you've enjoyed what we've been through today and look forward to the next episode. Obviously hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content. And also if you did enjoy the video, don't be afraid of hitting the like button or even dropping us a comment below. Cheers.